built-in cabinetry is definitely a luxe look, but Suzanne says you can get the look for less. We are in my sister Catherine's apartment and it's a rental, so she didn't want to spend a lot of money on built-ins that she couldn't take with her, but she's an avid reader and has a ton of books, so we had to do something to accommodate all the books. We worked with the Billy Bookcase, and I know we've all seen that Billy Bookcase retrofitted five million different ways, but I really like this idea. So we did four bookcases, starting from the outside, moving towards the middle, and with the extra space in here, we had some shelves cut down to fit. So really, you can do that in any size wall. Then we left this reveal. This is about an inch and a half wide, and we put a piece of MDF in there, painted it white to match. Now it feels like a considered design detail, this reveal. We lifted the whole thing up, on a platform and ran the same baseboard that you see in the rest of the apartment across the front at the bottom and capped off the whole thing with a crown molding. And it goes wall to wall so it feels like it was part of the apartment from the start. I don't know about you, I'm drooling right now because for all the books that are stacked up in my house, I can think about how that would be, that built-in would be so much, so amazing. A great solution. It's a great solution. <laughs> so Suzanne, it adds a lot of impact to a room and that's what we want to talk about um, right now. We want to add impact yeah. to spaces, add little, a little, little drama. Ways. Yeah, little ways you can add drama that aren't that tricky. They're not complicated. Yes. They're actually easy to do. Okay. So they're not going to break your budget. Yes. Uh, so the first one we wanted to talk about was, and we hear about mold a lot when you talk to designers about ways to add impact in space, adding different kinds of dados and molding to a wall. Yeah. One of the tricks we have is if you have a baseboard like this one that you mm -hmm. see right here, this is your builder basic baseboard. Yeah. It's probably around two inches high. It's not very dramatic. It's not. Um, so the whole trick is you want to make it feel beefier, you want it to feel taller, and you can just add different kinds of dado on top of it to give you that look. So here's the inspiration, for instance. Here's one that's about five inches high. Yeah. So the trick is you don't put them next to each other, Tracy. You okay. leave a space. And you paint And you it. paint. So all you have to do is put this one above it, this, and this is a really inexpensive trim because yes. it's, it's so skinny, yeah. and paint the space in between, and you'll get the effect of this. Got yeah. it. So easy way to get your the effect of beefier um, mold things. You can do that on your windows as well, just to beef them up. So I love that trick. And you can make them really big. If you want to, you can if go you crazy. Want to. And there's all kinds of sizes of moldings that yes. you can choose from. Beautiful. So um, one of my favorite things, I'm known for this, is replating your metals. So oh. I seriously have replated my faucets, my hooks, my um, tub tray mm -hmm. in my bathtub. So if you have, for instance, a chrome metal, this, these are feet on bath, uh, from a Victorian bathtub. Right. You can take it to a place and have it plated in any kind of metal finish you want, like an antique bronze or copper or this antique brass, and completely change the look of whatever room you're talking about. The main thing you have to remember is that if there's rubber parts on the thing you're taking, mm -hmm. they have to be out because they will not do well with the plating process. Got it. They will melt. Yes. <laughs> and the other thing is if you are doing a faucet, you have to be able to take it apart first and make sure you know how to put it back together. Okay. Okay. Otherwise, you're a little bit messed up and you won't have a faucet at all. That's fair, um, but yeah. <laughs> look at the difference it makes. Isn't like you can go from something that's a little bit dull yeah. and it completely brightens it up. Absolutely. And you can avoid, like I did my faucet and I avoided having to invest in a really expensive faucet. That's right. So I think that's a great idea. Nice. Color blocking. We have a yeah. photo of color blocking. So I love this picture of this room. We did this room. I did Ooh, this room nice. many, many, many years ago. Yeah. But, and what I love is that the color is on the walls is this beautiful green. Mm -hmm. And that gives the room a lot of impact, but what gives it even more more is the contrasting color on the bookcases behind the bookcase. Yes. This is another retrofit of a Billy done uh -huh. in a much more simple way, but that brilliant blue behind it just gives you that huge color impact. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like thinking about the back of your bookcase as a way to act color. And adding that contrast, Absolutely. which is incredible. What about fringe? Okay, fringe. I have a couple of samples of fringe here. These are all from Kravit. Yes. Um, I love fringes and we saw that in that room and we have a detail shot of it. Just adding it along your sofa. You just have yeah. to do a whip stitch. It's really easy to put on and you get oh, that sort is. of old world library look. So you can take a more contemporary sofa, sofa and make it feel a bit more old world. Yeah. And I love fringe, especially the tall fringe like this one, because once you've got it on, you can stash stuff underneath your sofa <laughs> and no one's going to see it. <laughs> I love so your practical great, side, my friend. for small 
small spaces. Lovely. Yeah. Okay, so you did something really cool uh, with light yes, fixtures. Yes, I did. As well, well, I want to talk about the pictures first, if that's okay. possible. Yeah, yeah. Let's do that. I went on this tour of this enclave in Florida, very mm. upscale enclave, and I swear every single house had a lamp or something covered in seashells. Yes. And you know, and so these are two beautiful examples: a wall sconce and a table lamp. You know, if you go on your holiday and everyone scours the beach for seashells and they bring them home, they leave them in a bucket in their basement. Right. So now you can do something with them. Now you do so something. So rather with than it. changing the shade, change your base, cover yeah. it in seashells. This is an example of one. I did this a number of years ago as well, and it has stood up so it's well. I'm very good. proud of it. And it's just coir. My girlfriend gave me her old lamp that was in really rough shape, and we covered it in rope. Just a glue Smart. gun, that's all you need. But it gives you that designer feel and change the lampshade, of course. Of course. That looks amazing. Yeah. Um, we've got uh, fake studs that yeah. you, or faux studs that you might want to think about putting on the wall. Yeah, so this was, isn't this beautiful? They look like studs, but these are actually painted. So oh. it's, it's trompe l'oeil, it's faux finishing. Oh, nice. The design who did this space took it all along the edge of the trim and down the baseboard and it gives you that sort of finished polished edge and I loved how the furniture had the studs as well so yes. it tied in. I know that people are going to want to know where you got everything Mayfair plating and also Brenlow for the wood molding. Suzanne thank you.